Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Ostrowski and uh, today we will talk about a TypeScript metaprogramming. Um, before we actually start, I want to show you a, a little example of some uh, component, some snippet code. As you can see, it's an Angular component, okay, uh, I believe everyone have seen it. It looks like an Angular component at least, it works like an Angular component. Um, it's have a uh, decorator component um, it's even have provide uh, service dependency injection similar to how the uh, angular components works the only one uh, uh, little difference is there is no angular on this page currently okay so what you can see here it's a plain typescript um, without any usage of any framework no angular no react or anything like this okay so what we can see here it's a um, component decorator okay we'll talk about this uh, about later but basically well, this is the the whole magic okay uh, this component of this function that returns another function so this decorator actually is uh, taking the old information that we need that we providing the old configuration the template snippet the uh, style URL selector on the HTML pages you have to be um, uh, filled with the component uh, it even does the dependency injection of the service inside and uh, all this is uh, a generates simple component okay it's there's no big magic yeah there's a lot of functionality not here okay it's just a simple example of, to show how we can use um, how we can use um, decorators to generate components okay be honest if you will find this uh, project uh, and you will see the implementation of this decorator you're not gonna like it okay so please don't do it because it's like a set of bad practices of how to uh, how not to do okay what you should not do with the uh, DOM manipulation but as example it's 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 good it's a good start okay so let's talk about uh, before we actually will jump into the meta programming itself uh, let's talk about what the meta programming is and a little bit about myself too. So my name is Daniel Ostrovsky and uh, I work at GUH and uh, you can see here my uh, Twitter. Um, you can scan this um, barcode and to see my uh, website um, or just go to danduh.me. Uh, there is a list. There's links to my uh, videos and li and also links to my uh, articles. Oh, also articles about the TypeScript meta programming. You can find me in Medium. Um, if you have any questions, just feel free to ask me. I will be more than uh, uh, glad and happy to uh, to answer any questions. Um, okay, so I'm a developer with more than twenty years. Uh, I'm full cycle developer, meaning uh, everything from design, development, testing, uh, delivery, um, monitoring, and everything. It's all I believe uh, developers should know, engineers should know. I'm a public speaker and writer on uh, multiple languages, English, Hebrew, Russian, and Ukrainian. Um, I'm an open source contributor. I'm a volunteer mentor at some... Um, it's an organization and also a meetup owner and runner uh, ng heroes so this is all about me and the pictures by the way it's my hobbies okay diving uh, rope running and uh, yachting yeah but there's only one picture here a real one uh, try to guess which one um so typescript metaprogramming from zero uh, to 100 out of millions okay so let's be honest the meta programming is something huge it's something big uh we will just uh, touch a little bit okay kind of uh we'll go a little bit deeper okay as an example uh, and uh, i hope the usage and use case that i will show will actually explain how things works behind the scene and what you can do uh using the meta programming but again it's, it's a very huge topic um so meta programming definition um, is a programming technique in which computer programs have the ability to treat other programs. In, okay, this is, yeah, let's be honest, a little bit boring, right? So 
if you want, you can go to the Wikipedia and find yourself and read it. Uh, let's not waste time on it. Um, let's simplify. The, one of the most important thing uh, when we start with the new technology is to understand um, what we should not do okay, while we are using this technology. For example, um, you know, this is kind of uh, examples of how we should not use irons. Um, because sometimes a wrong usage of the technology might be a little bit uh, dangerous, okay, for our life, um, or a little bit weird. So, uh, the rule of thumb of metaprogramming, on my opinion, okay, I couldn't find uh, some kind of, you know, uh, community uh, or opinion about the best practices or bad practices about the metaprogramming, but the one of the most important things that I believe um, we have a consensus here is um, metaprogramming should not change the business logic of our code. Usually in the most cases, the metaprogramming is the code that's used by somebody else. Okay, so if you write decorators or you write some functionality that have to be used by someone else, so please avoid changing the, uh, the business logic. Can we do it? Yes, definitely. Um, in some cases, for example, in uh, in security field, okay, the business logic actually is changed uh, by metaprogramming. So it's very common use. But in day-to-day -day usage, like if you're developing some framework or developing some library and uh, people want to use it, uh, the other people will use it, other developers will use it. We really don't want to change any business logic. We want to add uh, to the code uh, ability to analyze, okay, for example, uh, debugging or data collection or stuff like this, uh, additional flexibility for the code, um, dependency injection, of course, is one of the use cases, and runtime validation and assertion is also uh, one of the usages, great uh, use cases for, uh, for using metaprogramming. Um, so let's say, uh, take a look how we build our applications. Um, let's first of all answer the question. Can, are we really building our applications or we just building the blocks, functions, classes, models, components, but we're not actually building the application, okay? It's, uh, we can say the Angular build application for us, uh, interpretator, node interpretator uh, builds the application for us, but we kind of, let's be honest, uh, as the developers, the Angular developers, um, most of us, okay, um, we don't care about how things work behind the scene. Um, we just build in the component. Uh, we um, apply in some references in different places, some kind of setting the configuration between different modules, components, services, and stuff. And we hope that when we will serve the application, it will up and running, right? And if it's a you know, mismatch, we'll get the uh, error notifications. So we're not building the application, we're building blocks, we're building functions, classes, modules, components, services, uh, microservices, whatever, but actual the application is not built by us, okay? Similar, if we'll talk about the houses, so we can build block, panels, windows, doors, uh, I don't know, buy some furniture, stuff like this, but actual work of the building and combining all together, we'll do constructor on the construction field, okay? We'll just ship it over there and someone will actually uh, build all things together. Um, so, metaprogramming uh, is kind of a blueprint or manual, okay, that helps us to combine different parts um, into the one, you know, into the finalized and uh, human readable product. Okay, um, that's how it usually works for me, for example, all, all IKEA manuals. Um, but it's a little bit more complicated, okay? It's like um, metaprogramming sometimes, sometimes it's pretty simple, okay? Let's say to get some kind of loggers or to get some kind of um, type assertions. Um, but when we're talking about a little bit more complicated things, um, like dependency injections and stuff, 
it's become a little bit more complicated. Okay, it's 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 it requires some abstractions, thinking and stuff. So um, that's how uh, you know from one picture uh, to describe how the meta programmers looks like. I believe that this is picture would be the the perfect fit for it. Um, so let's code. So as soon as we are uh, on the Angular Tiny conference um, and our main our main target and main topic is Angular, um, I believe it will be you know, very nature to talk about uh, the correctors, okay? And uh, in general, all most of the uh, TypeScript metaprogramming is all about the decorators. So let's take a look on this example. Um, Here's a simple class, okay, my class, uh, the method that have uh, that calculates a number of primes uh, and uh, um, there is a simple uh, decorator. Now, what this decorator is? Decorator is a function. It's a simple function, okay, it's nothing complicated. It's just a function that returns another function, okay? And as you can see, uh, it accept, uh, it can accept some options, or uh, some uh, parameters that we can pass, you know, while we are uh, decorating the uh, method or class. Um, and uh, it's except uh, target is actually our class, okay? Um, key is the name of the method or property we're decorating. In this case, it would be primes. And descriptor, it's something that uh, I don't want to actually to explain it because it's, it's another topic, what descriptors is but some kind of meta objects, meta information about the property on the object. Um, I suggest find me again in Medium. Uh, there is a, a set of articles about the TypeScript meta programming. The first one uh, is actually is about a descriptor, okay? And objects and the metadata on the uh, object itself and how to change and how we can hack and stuff like this. Uh, kind of interesting thing. So as you can see here, Okay, all this code is not relevant. All it does, it's actually uh, throws the uh, console warn, okay, warning uh, about the deprecation. Okay, that this method is deprecated. I mean, let's say, for example, you know, uh, the, the regular use case for this is when I have um, a public library and one of the methods should be deprecated in, the, in the one of the uh, future versions. So I will put just this decorator and uh, each time when the uh, application is running, uh, the method will actually fire and uh, uh, it will be on the logs for the users, for developers who actually using my uh, my library, okay? To ensure that, hey, please be noticed, you know, it's gonna be deprecated, change it, and so on. Um, of course, we can pass here, let's say, additional information, okay? Let's say some kind of URL to the documentation, how to uh, change and what and what uh, other methods should be used. Um, and we can also like, pass it over here. And if there's, ah, sorry, it's uh, wrong, okay? It should be an object, okay, right? What do we have here? A default message, okay? Please go to and uh, here. Okay, we can see that we can pass, uh, for example, some URL and uh, people can go to the, uh, I will get the information where we should go and uh, see the documentation, how to uh, change the, the method and which method should be used instead. Um, okay, also, you know, there's other uh, examples we can find here. For example, timer, uh, timer will actually measure, it's also uh, useful uh, as a decorator for the day-to-day uh, -day work, for the day -to -day development, okay, is uh, actually uh, shows the uh, time execution, okay, how long it took to execute this method. Okay, as a main example, uh, for the meta programming, we will try to build our own uh, node framework, okay, uh, service. Um, if you're familiar with the NestJS, so we're gonna build something very similar to it. Um, let's take a look on the exam, on the Simple example for the uh, express express uh, service. Um, usually, it looks like this. This is a uh, roads file. Okay. Mm, yeah, a little bit complicated. It's like it's not complicated, but it's too big, and all the 
services in the same place, all the roads on the same place, on the add points. Um, okay, uh, and this is the controller that actually holds all the logics and that's uh, like keep going and going and going and, and going. Huh? Okay, so oh, it's still going. Okay, it's a little bit big, it's a huge file. You're not gonna believe me, but this is production. Okay, so uh, this is not our case, right? We don't like such files. We don't like uh, all in the same, same big file all together. We, we prefer classes and we prefer controllers and we prefer services and we prefer everything to be uh, separated by context, by entities, but some type of logic. And uh, so let's do it, okay? Let's start with uh, uh, what we have here as initial one. Uh, this you can see uh, it's kind of a simple implementation of uh, Express service uh, as a uh, as a on class based, okay, as object oriented kind of thing. Um, so it's just a simple class, okay? It got uh, the controllers, basically the, our our controllers that we will work on. This is the most important part port just the port we want to listen on um, the functions that we have here the methods that we have here on this class is uh, listen we'll actually use you know you can see here we're initiating the app straight the express from express nothing nothing um, too complicated okay and we actually listen the port okay uh, uh, that we provided during the installation of the class also nothing uh, too complicated uh, one of the things that we're doing here, uh, additional to it, is actually the init controllers and we're using this, uh, some kind of controller handler and we're passing the controllers into this handler, okay? We will get to this back later, of course, um, as soon as we'll look at the controllers itself. And let's go to our controller. Uh, our controllers, okay? I will remove all the unnecessary thing and we will just do it you know, step by step, um, you can see here our class controller, okay? This is the class that I want to be responsible for the uh, uh, road posts, okay? Um, controller for the posts, controller for the comments, controller for the users, controller for the images, etc. Uh, we, we like microservices and that's what we're gonna build. Um, so our controller have a get list post, okay? have uh, get one post by id of course and get uh, one post and comments for example if you want to use you know additional data add more data for the post um okay so how actually uh i can tell to the express that hey use this class uh, and these methods for this road and for this path um so this is our first, let's take a look on our first class decorator, okay? Uh, controller decorator, of course. And we will pass our, um, the path we want to be, this controller to be responsible on. Okay, so let's look on this controller. That's it. Three lines of code. That's all I need. Yeah, that's basically all I need. Because what we're doing here, as you can see, the controller, the class controllers, they accept in the signature the uh, the target only, right? So target is actually our class, okay? And what we see here, it's a reflect, uh, using of the reflect and uh, define metadata on the reflect object. Now, what is the reflect object? Basically, think about it as, um, let's say I want uh, to add some configuration, okay, some additional metadata on the controller, on the my class, where this class should be used and how should it be used, okay? And let's say um, I have different options. One of them is to say, okay, I have a config here um, and I will add to this config the information about this class, okay? Let's say I want this class will be uh, responsible for the root path uh, posts, okay? And all roads 
uh, that will go after all paths, okay, or subpath that will go after the post, I will um, define as a list of objects, okay. Then each one of them will hold a path, okay. For example, this can be empty, and then we're talking about the uh, slash posts, or it can be post ID, okay, like this, and then we're talking about the post slash ID. Um, then uh, I will put here the uh, handler, okay, the name, actually the key of the method, let's say get list post that what I want to be responsible for the uh, empty, okay, so slash posts, uh, handler, get list posts, and um, HTTP method, HTTP method, of course, is responsible for it is get, okay, now, for example, if I will go further and say, okay, uh, HTTP method post, okay, the handler to uh, to take care of the post method, of course, will be create post, right? And then we need to create post, and then we need to create this function that named create post that accept payload and actually does the all changes in database, okay? And as, 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 as you know, the regular flow. So, and this is, and then I will use somewhere during the installation of the application, the service, I will go to the post controller, I will take the config property and I will apply it somehow on the express and basically that's it, that's all done, okay? But let's be honest, it's a little bit complicated, uh, it's a little bit overkilling to do, to create the config file this way to, to add the configuration for the power controller this way. So instead of it, we will use decorator that actually will accept all our information, okay? Uh, base path, um, this path itself, okay? Posts, target, this is our class, and let's key that we're saving, okay? Basically, it will do, well, it's, it'll be easier to understand if I will write like this, okay? So it will take our information uh, currently, it's only the base path, only this post string, and save on the class somewhere. Where exactly? Uh, let's be honest, I don't care. Okay, all I know that it's saved somewhere on it on the class itself. So this metadata, instead of me to creating the additional configuration property, will be saved by a Reflect API, uh, and the API is defined metadata. Okay, key, values, and the target where it should be saved to. That's it. Uh, so this one can be removed. Now I want to save the information about the get list post that the get list post have to be responsible on the on the uh, slash post on the get method, right? On the get HTTP method. So we have uh, decorator get, okay? Um, that says, okay, uh, the list, okay, let's let's also add on the same time ID. Post ID. Okay, and um, so basically what we're saying here is that uh, this method will be responsible for the uh, get slash post um, API call and uh, let's see how it's actually saved of this data. Um, okay, so this is our decorator. We can we just made here some kind of manipulation with making the uh, uh, factory. Okay, the get factory, post factory, and of course we can add you know the delete, page, put factories. Okay, all we do here is just uh, using the same function because the decorators will be equal for all uh, type of methods. Um, get post update delete whatever. Um, and um, so here's our uh, router decorator, right? So let's do, let's check what's we, what the type of the object we save here, okay? So again, uh, it accept, because it's a uh, method decorator, accept target itself, right? The, our class, property key, name of the method, and uh, descriptor, we talked about it later, 
please find the article read about the descriptor um, so this is the object that we create this is the object that we want to save similar to what I did here right uh, let's go back go back go back go back and see if we okay so this is the roads okay so basically this is the object this is the object that we created and we want to save it on property roads on our class on our controller um, property key name of the method HTTP method get post update delete and pet either it's empty pet or let's say slash uh, uh, I post ID, it can be slash post ID slash comments, whatever it is. Okay. Regular uh, usage of the key value. Okay. Manipulation. If not exist, let's create uh, the key for this uh, type of information roads. Um, we can define whatever we want. Let's choose it to be roads. Uh, and we actually what we're taking if, if the roads already exist. Okay. So we will use the existing uh, roads. And we'll just update it. We can we'll add uh, or push more one more object. Okay, why? Because we have multiple methods on the class, and this uh, function will be executed on each time when we're using uh, the get decorator, right? So let's go back to the get decorators. Get here and get here will be used. Uh, twice and three times and more times as, as, more, as more as I'm using this uh, decorator uh, this function will be executed and of course it will we want to add all the methods uh, that are decorated we want to add them to uh, to the object with the key roads that sits on our target on our controller okay um, that's it so this is the object that we creating and we saving it under the key roads on our target um, params and everything else we'll talk about it a bit later but most important thing it's this one currently okay okay so what's next so we save this data okay we have we save data uh, that post controller is responsible on the post we also save data that uh, get list post is responsible on uh, like root uh, slash post uh, road and uh, get one post params get one post by ID is responsible for the slash post slash post ID okay let's see if it works at all I don't know I'm not quite sure if it will work right now uh, but we can uh, try and we can see here Say so let's go posts. Woo! Okay, post works. And post ID. Uh, not implemented. Uh, please import 3000. Uh, and this is a, our ID. And not implemented this comes from here. And looks okay. We have here some additional uh, decorators, params, handling, param handling. We will look, we will talk about this later. Okay. Okay, okay. Let's continue. Um so we save this data now the question okay say so how we actually using how so how it's connected how the things works and here's how the things works here in our app class okay uh, remember this one controller handler let's take a look at the controller handler the controller handler accept all our controllers by the way this is the way how we actually passing these controllers okay just when we instantiate in our application our app right this is the app uh, okay uh, server okay we're doing the association we're passing the set the list of the controllers we want to be uh we want to use post controller com uh, comments controller users controllers etc the port we want to listen on so basically everything you know nothing happened here nothing nothing special nothing too complicated um uh, and during the instantiation uh, the uh, controller handler is fired it's got the all controllers that we pass in into the uh, our class, and uh, that's what's going on in the controller. Okay, let's go controller by controller. It reads, it checks if the metadata base pad is exist on our controller. Okay, it's also uh, checks if the roads exist on the controller itself. Okay, some kind of validation that we actually dealing with the controller and not with some kind of other. 
class by mistake, okay? Uh, that don't have no pad, no base pad, no draw. So, you know, maybe some by mistake provided a class. So we not we don't we, we do want to you know to throw the error or some kind of warning. Hey, you provided the wrong uh, the wrong class. Um, okay, and here as soon as everything is okay and we define that it is a controller, it have roads, and we're retrieving the roads. Okay, but this is our console log that actually shows. We're retrieving okay by get metadata base pad from the controller that we saved on the previous on the controller decorator, and here we're retrieving roads okay get metadata key roads from our controller that we saved on our controller on the get decorator. Whew. And all this information is actually uh, logged here okay everything that we saved in previous controllers. This is how we actually retrieving this information. This is how it looks. This is how this information is saved on our class. Now all we need to do is just to tell Express which path and which controller is responsible for for the path. Okay. Sorry for my English, by the way. It's not my main language. I can speak English, Hebrew, Russian, Ukrainian. Okay. So um, let's take a look. Uh, we here we making some kind of string manipulation, you know, to uh, the current path. Let's make it not current path. I don't like this a uh, this name. It will be more uh, like a full path, okay? Uh, meaning that uh, full path is actually make the join with base path, right? Our slash posts and the uh, Road uh, on the specific method, okay, on the specific road object. In this case, it's empty. In this case, is post ID. Uh, so this is, will be the full path. Uh, we're retrieving the handler, okay. So based on the road property key, property key is actually the name of the method that we saved in get decorator, okay. And we're retrieving the handler itself, the function itself, the method itself that should be responsible. And we're passing into the application okay now this line if you look at it and you will change all these properties to the actual values it looks like this app dot get okay because this is actually get method it can be get post update whatever and function full path right whatever this posts a post ID and uh, controller handler. Okay, this is our this how we doing it right here. Okay, here we're using road because it's not uh, express; it's uh, Festify. But it, this is this is how it used. Okay, this is absolutely the same line. Okay. Just we have only one line to allow all this, to and to update all this data, to to provide all this data for our express service, okay? Instead of having this thing, and okay. that's it. And of course we doing some kind of console log to um, some kind of console log, console information for the, uh, you know, which one of the names property is responsible for which one. You can see here the router, post controller, get list posts, method get responsible for the route posts. That's it. That's basically it. Thank you very much, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, one more time. Um, Find me in social, dando 81 on Medium, dando 81 on Twitter, dando.me, my, my website. Follow me, find me, ask me questions, read articles. Um, there will be more articles about different topics. Um, that's it. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you, uh, Angular TinyCon, for inviting me in. And good luck.